Red beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, hogs, dogs, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits, you name it! It went over to y'all today. It's clean and okay, fool, man. This woman says she got hogs, rabbit, and it. She said, hey, "You name it, I got it." <laughs> now, hold on, that look. Okay, this is the woman right here. I think her name is Shirley uh, Caesar. Look, check this out real quick. This is the interview she did with TM TMZ. I'm really excited about everything that's going on. In fact, it's mind-boggling. I'm. I'm not used to this. I really don't understand it. I like the, what I would call the original one because it's taken from a, a recording session that I did at my church. It was a live recording session. When, when you look and see all of the gyrations and especially the women, I can, I can even put up with the dancing but all of the shaking uh, and, and the twerking and all of that. I just want everybody to know that uh, I'm a gospel singer. I'm a born-again believer. Uh, I'm a pastor. And I, I don't ever want anything, not anything, um, to bring a reflection on uh, uh, what I stand for. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, ram, hog, malt, chicken, donkeys, turkeys. You city, y'all. Just in case any y'all didn't think she said hog box. She said hog box. She said rabbit head. You name it, she got it. Okay, look, check this out, y'all. I want to go to this scripture right here. First of all, this woman says she a Christian pastor. And uh, that's the problem right there. Remember the scriptures say, uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians real quick. Let me see, chapter 11. Let me see, we're going to start at verse 3. And look, look, this might be a little longer than 10 minutes. Hey, it's funny to me, man. I love our people, man. It is what it is, man. Hey, you can't live without Jake, man. The scriptures say we the salt of the world. This thing crazy. But look, we got to correct some stuff about this unclean food. This uh 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear... Lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity of that is in Christ. A lot of people think Christ came to do away from the law. That's why he said, look, hey, I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, meaning his trickery, his tricks, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. When Christ came, he came to fulfill the law's sacrifice. Meaning now we don't have to sacrifice animals no more for sin. All we got to do is believe in Christ and have faith in him. Now, look, this is a scripture right here, 1 Timothy chapter 4, that a lot of Christians misuse and think they can eat anything clean and unclean food. I'm going to start at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, look, I'm going to do a second video. I got to explain Acts 10 about uh, the vessel uh, you know, they rise, eat, you know, you know, the judge, y'all Christians love to miss you. Trust me, I'm gonna do a video about it. But, uh, this first Timothy chapter four, verse one, it say, now the spirit speak it expressly that in a lot of time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now doctrines of devils is anything that's outside of what God teaches. Let's see what the most high doctrine is. Let's go to Proverbs 4 and 2. Now, check this out. This is the most high doctrine right here. Proverbs 4 and 2. It says, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Now, let's see what Christ came to teach. That's why I say, look, don't be good, uh, beguiled for the simplicity that's in Christ. It's simple. For real. Let's go to John. I think it's John chapter 7. Let me see. I think it's verse 24. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me Google it real quick. Okay, John 7 and 16. 
It say Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that seek me. So when Christ came, he came with the same doctrine that the Most High God have given us. And let's go right back to it real quick. Proverbs 4 and 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So he let you know at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So if they ain't coming with the law, guess what? It's the doctrine of devils. So let's keep on going. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Speaking lies and hypocrisy saying that you love God, the law's done away with, but you don't keep the commandments. That's hypocrisy. Because it's only one way to show your love to God. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 real quick. Because you can't give God a hug. You can't give him a gift. You can't shake his hand. You can't give him a kiss. So how do you show love to God? First John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. These commandments ain't hard to do, y'all. These commandments are not hard to do. So let's go right back to what we said. First Timothy 4 and 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot urn. Forbidden to marry. And guess who do that today? That's the Catholic Church. Like the Pope. The Popes don't have no why. They forbid to marry. That's a, that's a doctrine of devils right there. And commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. What is the truth, y'all? He said, look, he created meats for us to receive with thanksgiving. But you got some people telling you to abstain from no meats. Just like you got some Israelite camps out here that teach that uh, you don't supposed you don't supposed to eat none but herbs. That's a doctrine of devils right there. He said, "Look, I created meats that you supposed to receive with thanksgiving." Let's go to Psalms one nineteen verse one forty two. Let's see what the truth is according to the Bible. It say, "Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law." is the truth so let's go right back to what we was at it said forbidden to marry this first timothy 4 and 3 and commanded to abstain from meats which god have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth meaning know the law god gave us a dietary law now this one messes people up right here here it go if you believe and know the truth you know what uh meats that the most high created for us to receive with thanksgiving right here here you go first timothy's four and four this how your this where your christian pastor go to to corrupt your minds the scriptures say for every creature of god is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving what is the meat that is received with thanksgiving? It say, received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. The, the script, the, uh, the food that the Most High made clean according to the law. Now look, is every creature of God good? Yes, I want to go to Proverbs 16 real quick. This Proverbs 16 verse 4. It said, the Lord have made all things for himself. God made everything for himself, y'all. Everything for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. The Most High created every creature on this earth. He created everything for itself. And when he created, I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to start. I'm going to go to day. Uh, let's go when he started to create creatures. We're going to go to like the day 3. Let's start at Genesis 1 verse 20. It says, And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moved which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. God created everything, but he, he said, I saw that it was good. Let's read on. It's saying, God bless them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. He said, look, everything that he created, the fifth day was good. But let's go to Leviticus chapter 11 real quick. I'm a, I'm a, I, I can't read all this, y'all. I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to start at the 45. 
He said everything he created the fourth day was good, but check this out. Uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You should therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl. So on the fifth day, he created the fowl and everything that moving in the water. It said every living creature that moving in the water. And every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So everything he created on the fifth day was good. But he said, look, this is my law. You got to make a difference between the clean and the unclean. And between the beast that may be E and the beast that may not be E. He said, you got to make a difference between these things. You got to be holy unto me. You just can't put anything in your temple. Come on, y'all. This I'm telling you, if you can't understand this, then something wrong. Let's go right back to Genesis chapter 1 real quick. And uh, let's go to the sixth day. Now the sixth day. Uh, it say, and God said, let the earth, the earth, so fowls and everything else was made of the water. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeper thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Let's read on. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Every creature of God is good. Why? Because when you go to Proverbs 16 and 4, let's read it again. See, y'all, I'm telling you, look, this is how you know that. When you got somebody that got understanding of the scriptures and keeping God's laws, teaching you the Bible. It said, the Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. God made everything on this earth to serve a purpose. It's just like the pig. The hog served his purpose, but guess what? According to Leviticus chapter 11, let's go there again. Verse 45. Everything God made, he made for himself, and he made it good. But he said right here, you cannot do away with this. This is a I'm going to show you how simple this is in Christ. It says, for I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. He's only talking to the Israelites. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all the Israelites the Bible speaks of. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl. And of every living creature that moved in the waters, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth. So he gave us law concerning these beasts to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beasts that may be eaten and the beasts that may not be eaten. That's your job to do that. Like the sister said, she got hog mogs and rabbits, and you name it, she got some unclean food. And you can't eat that unclean food, y'all. Look, go to Job chapter 14, verse 4. It's saying, who can bring a clean thing out of unclean? Not one. You can't pray over the fool and make it clean. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. For every creature of God is good. It is good. It's good for what the Most High created it for. He made everything for himself. He said in Genesis chapter 1 that it was good when he created it. But he told you in Leviticus chapter 11 to make a difference between what's to be E and what's not to be E. You can't eat no hog maw. Pork is unclean. You can't eat no rabbit. Rabbit is unclean. You can't eat catfish. Catfish is unclean. You can't eat no shrimp, crab, lobsters. None of them things according to Leviticus chapter 7 and Deuteronomy 14. It is unclean. It said for every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused if to be received with thanksgiving. He told you the food that you receive with thanksgiving. He said, let's jump back up uh, to verse 3. Forbidden to marry and commanded to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth, meaning know the law. Jump down to verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Let's see what sanctified by the word. Let's see what it means to be sanctified. John chapter 17 verse 17 it say sanctify them through thy truth thy word is the truth so the most high told us what he sanctified he sanctified the, he told you what food he made clean for you to eat sanctify let's look up sanctify real quick let's get it let's 
see what sanctify mean according to their dictionary. Uh, <laughs> I like this right here. Let's see. <laughs> it says to make holy. What did he make holy to you to eat? Let's go right back to Leviticus chapter 11. Hey, y'all, this light work, man. Look, he said, for I am the Lord that bring this is uh, Leviticus 11 and 45. For I am the Lord that bringing you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You should therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beast. Oh, look, he letting you know what he sanctified, what he made holy. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. It's going to explain it a little bit more better for you. Leviticus chapter 20. I'm telling y'all, hey, we got to learn these scriptures, y'all. We got to quit being deceived. Let me see. Leviticus chapter 20. Let's start at 22. Now listen, this what these are the commandments he gave to the Israelites. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all the Israelites the Bible speaks of. You should therefore keep all my statutes and keep all my judgments and do them, that the land where I bring you to dwell therein spool you not out. Let's read on. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you. For they have committed all these things, and therefore I abhor them. But I have said unto you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Ye shall therefore put a difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean. And ye shall not make your souls abundable by beasts or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated you, uh, separated from you as unclean. God said, don't make your souls abundable by eating those things. I separated them because he sanctified it already. He made that holy for you to eat. That's why it says sanctified by the word of God. And where you find it, where you find it at in the word of God, Leviticus chapter 11 and Leviticus chapter 14 in prayer. Now look, let's cause you're supposed to pray over all your food. Now let's keep going. Verse 26. And you shall be holy unto me. You see that? Let's read sanctify again. Sanctify. To make holy. To give official acceptance of approval to something. What was the official uh acceptance and approval God gave us what did he sanctify the food that he said you should eat not the foods that you're supposed to eat Job 14 and 4 who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean not one you cannot bring a clean thing out of unclean nobody can do that you can't pray over it go right back to what we was at first Timothy 4 and 4 it says, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. He already told you the food to be received with thanksgiving. That's the uh, thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What was sanctified? What was made holy by God? We just read it in the scriptures in Leviticus chapter 11, Deuteronomy chapter 14, Leviticus chapter 20, 22 through 26, y'all. Let me see. Go to Revelations real quick, chapter 21, verse 27. Now, remember, the Most High said that don't make your soul abominable by eating unclean things. That was in Leviticus 20, verse 24, right here. He said, don't make your souls, ab you shall not, right here, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any amount of living thing that creep it on the ground, which I have separated you from, from you as unclean. Now let's go to the New Testament. You can't get no more New Testament than the Revelations. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it. This is about the kingdom of heaven. Anything that defile it. If you eat unclean food, you defiling yourself. If you're in the midst of whoremongering and fornication, you defiling your body. Neither whatsoever work it abomination. If you sisters wearing pants, according to Deuteronomy 22 and 5, that's abomination. If you men wearing dresses, according to Deuteronomy 22 and 5, that's abomination. If y'all in the midst of homosexuality, according to Leviticus chapter 13, that's abomination. If you eat unclean food, according to Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, that's abomination. And it say, and there. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Don't get your name taken out the book of life sitting up there eating unclean food. 
Look, let's go here real quick. Revelation 22 and 11. But look, check this out. I say, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy, filthy still. So if you want to work abomination, continue to work the abomination. And he that is righteous, righteous meaning keeping the commandments of God, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, what do it mean to be holy? Whatever God is sanctified and made good for us, he gave us official proof of, let him be holy still. Stand on the laws of God, y'all. Don't let nobody push you away from the laws of God. Let's go right here to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He have made everything beautiful in his time. So don't let nobody say, oh, but everything made good. It, it is. He made everything beautiful in his time. God said it was good. I don't like snakes, but God made it for his perfect purpose, and he says it's good. For real. I don't like mosquitoes. But whatever God made it for is good. You know what I'm saying? He made it beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. God created everything for his purpose. So stop taking these scriptures and manipulating them. A lot of y'all going to die because you manipulate the scriptures. For real, though. Uh, let's go uh, to... Let me see. One last scripture, y'all. I'm wrapping it up. Uh, and I'm going to make another video about when he told Peter to rise, uh, rise, kill, and eat. <laughs> and, boy, y'all Christians love to manipulate this scripture. Now, I just had another scripture in my head. Let me think. Let me think. There's one more scripture that I need to bring out. Uh, man, Israel, I forgot. I'm trying to think of it now. You know what, I might just have to let it go right then and there. Let me see. Okay, I want to read this one more time. All right, this right. I think I'm going to let it go. <laughs> For real, though, I mean, I think we got our point across. It was another scripture I was thinking about in my head. It slipped my mind, though. Uh, so if I remember it, uh, I'll post it. On the comment page. Hey, y'all, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, I already got a lot of people telling me they wanted me to keep making videos like this. So, Lord's willing, he uh, continue to put his spirit on me. I'm going to make these videos. Uh, I already got like five more coming. So, just be looking for them. I'm trying to think. It was one more scripture that I wanted. But, I, oh, yeah, let's go to Matthew 5 real quick. The simplicity in Christ. Listen to Christ real quick, y'all. Don't let nobody beguile you from the simplicity that is in Christ. Matthew 5 and 17. Listen to this. It say, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not to come to destroy but to fulfill. Christ said I come to fulfill prophecy. Let's see what Christ came to fulfill real quick. Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Acts 3 and 18. Let's see what he came to fulfill. Because uh, Christians will say, oh, he came to fulfill the law, so we don't have to keep the laws no more. You crazy as hell, Christian. Okay, Acts 3 and 18. Uh, 3 and... Ah, mm, oh, this is John. Okay, y'all, hold on. Give me a minute. Okay. Acts 3, verse 18. It said, but those things... Let me blow this up real quick. But those things which God before have showed by the mouth of all his holy prophets that Christ should suffer, he have so fulfilled. That's what he came to do, die for the nation of Israel. So quit sitting up there reading scriptures you don't understand, y'all. He did come to fulfill the Lord's sacrifice too, die for the nation of Israel. So we don't have to sacrifice animals for sin no more. Now we under the mercy and grace of Christ. You got time to get yourself together. Okay, Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. The prophets, what do you find the prophets at? In the Old Testament. The Old Testament ain't done away, so-called Christians. They have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Doing what? Suffering for the nation of Israel and fulfilling the Lord's sacrifice. For real, I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle. Shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Hey, the earth ain't gonna pass, neither y'all. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4 say the earth abide forever. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, this Christ. 
He said, if you break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If you break God's commandments and teach people to break God's commandments, you're going to die. It is what it is. Listen to this verse 20. This is the kicker. For I say unto you, that your it, that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and Pharisees were keeping the commands, but at the same time, they was hypocrites. So they were saying one thing, doing the others. He said, look, your righteousness or your keeping the, com or the commandments got to exceed theirs. It got to exceed theirs. So uh, with that, Israel, uh, I want to say shalom, most high Christ bless. All right, one more scripture real quick, just to show you that you got to keep the commandments. You don't get no more New Testament than Revelations. <laughs> this Christ, once again, listen, it say, bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. The only way you're going to enter into the gates of the cities and get the rights to the tree of life and mortality. Hey, you got to keep the commandments of God. Hey, with that, I'm saying shalom. Most high Christ bless y'all. Hey, like, subscribe, comment. Hey, uh, any topics that y'all got that y'all want me to touch on? I'm trying to do them 10 minutes. Some of them going to be over 10 minutes. But, hey, we're going to do what we got to do. With that, uh, let me make sure I don't got no more scriptures. I don't. I'm Elgin Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.